So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the musical journey of uh, the guest today. Um, DJ, TV presenter, uh, author, and now we know musician, and also Manchester City supporter. Will you please give a big round of applause for Mr. Mark Radcliffe? <laughs> welcome, Mark. Thank you very much. I'm Lovely really to be here. Uh, enjoying, oh, well, I hope to enjoy this chat. All the guests that I've spoken to have had one thing in common. At yeah. some time, we've met through music. Yeah. I can't remember when we first met, but we might get into that at some point. I think it was at the Cambridge Folk Festival, but I could be wrong. Were you comparing or...? Uh, it's hard to say. Yeah. Okay. I, might, I might have been on the stage at some point, but <laughs> details are hazy, always. Well, we saw what you did today. A great set on the main stage. Thank at, you uh, very Costa. much. And I know you were very nervous about yeah. it. And I know you... Spent a fortune hiring my guitar. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, if you go back, I mean, were you a precocious brat? Were you from a musical family? Was it, was, did you have like an eccentric uncle who played the fiddle? What, what do you remember as a child? My, there was always music in my house. Mum played the piano. My dad was a music critic. He was a journalist. Um, and so, at a, but at a very early age, I was, the first thing I was interested in was the drums, really. Okay. And so um, when uh, Pick of the Pops came on with Alan Freeman on a Sunday afternoon... OK, I, I've got the demographic now. <laughs> uh, when I was 14, I, joined, uh, I formed a band, and we were called S. Pry, S. Full Stop Pry, which was a cooking fat. <laughs> and it was a hilarious riff on T-Rex, because you... Trex was also a cooking fat. Okay, thank no, you very no, you... much. Your appreciation is is overwhelming if 50 years too late. No, you... When I finally formed my own band, it was like, it was amazing. I don't know about you, but it was a revelation because this was a club that worked by your rules and no one could tell you you were doing it wrong. And still to this day, that's the wonderful thing about music, isn't it? Yes, I was at the same school as Ian McKellen. Ian McKellen, uh, I know, uh, trying to get some grandeur by association. Um, but it's the, not going to work here. No, I know. <laughs> um, um, but the, um, there was also, I was very interested, and I'm still quite interested in puppets and marionettes, and I love all that sort of thing. And so I was in the puppet club. And, the and puppet club? The what puppet sort of school club. are we talking about now? <laughs> well, you know. It, was a direct, it, it sounds was a like a public it, school It was a me. direct grand grammar school. It's a very Bolton school. It's a very grand edifice. Um, uh, but we, uh, and I was in the puppet club and we did a puppet show. <laughs> you should have called the band that. that no, I know, I know, I know. We were, you, were you naturally extrovert even then? Did yeah, you? I was a dick. But the, um, <laughs> no, I mean, I think I was really. I think, I, yeah, I think I was, I was a performer. Okay, let's scroll on then. So you, what, you do your O levels and your A levels. What mm. did you do for A level? A levels, I did economics, English and... Geography. No use so. whatsoever to you now. <laughs> well, English, I mean, yeah, you know, I use words. Yeah, you do. You I do, do use words. Um, and you know where you are, and you know that you're going to get paid. And you, well, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm not sure how much I'm getting paid for this weekend. <laughs> I, I, think, I think we may have erased some of the fee at the bar. You weren't tempted to go south. I went south from Bolton to Manchester. OK. <laughs> I went... I went, to, I went 11 miles south. No, that's not quite what we meant to be. I think you know, I mean, you weren't tempted by London. And, uh, I don't know, really. I mean... You know, there's a lot uh, of smoke in there. There's a lot of smoke and a lot of oil wheels. And, um, you know, it would, the first two songs would take them about 25 minutes, you know. A bit like Martin Simpson. Um, and um, <laughs> I went to see Judas Priest at Bolton Town Hall and I thought they were absolutely terrible. When we got old enough to drink, um, or not old enough to drink, but uh, you'd want to go to pubs where you could get served. One of the places you could get served um, was um, West Orton Folk Club. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. West Orton Folk Club. I just, wa I, I actually wanted to be um, glam rock, really. <laughs> Um, yeah, I wanted to be in T Rex or Roxy Music initially. Did you see the David Bowie the Ziggy Stardust tour? Yeah, I did see. In fact, um, last week on the Six Music Show. Um, we did a thing from 50 years of Aladdin Same. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we talked to Mike Garson, who's the piano player, who yeah, played yeah. an amazing piano solo on the title track. And I was driving in to do the show, listening to that album, and thinking, and, and thinking I've just been really grateful of the life that I've had with it because I was thinking I bought that record with my pocket money, yeah. not knowing that one day I would know David Bowie. 
You know, I'd never, ever have been so presumptuous to call him a friend, but he knew I was, and I had his email address, and I'd ask him the odd thing. And, and you, you think, how could that have happened, really, that you were a Bolton schoolboy, and from your money from your paper round, you bought a lad insane, and one day you'd be in the same room as him? And he said, but can you present a radio show? And I said, well, how hard can that be? <laughs> really? Which, like, really, I still stick to. I mean, it's like, he isn't doing anything. It's only talking between the records. That's the thing that pisses me off about Six Music sometimes, when people are always saying, like, oh, you know, we've searched through all the crates, and we've dug for musical gold at the end of the room to get over yourself you pick some records you know it's not hard you know? so I that- told them loads of lies I told them that like you know I was made my own art films and all that by which I meant a mate of mine had a video camera and I'm like I just, like you know always lie in job interviews is the advice I give people they're never gonna check what I did tell them was that I'd produced all Joy Division's albums <laughs> and um I just figured they wouldn't check, and all the people we know who did all the all the yeah. peel sessions. And but suddenly I was like living in London, and and um, like record companies would want to take you everywhere for lunch and for dinner and to gigs, and records just came for. And you were just it was like uh, you know. You, it was just unbelievable. I was uh, like, did you lead a bit of a rock and roll life? Yeah. Like, up late, partying a yeah. bit? Yeah. 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 <laughs> All of that, because why wouldn't you? Yeah, and I was exactly. 25. Yeah, yeah. I was 25. And Smile and Nashy and Nicey, that, that mm. era of the presenters. Mm. Did you feel uneasy in their company? And, yeah. And did you have any inkling of the Savile thing? Jimmy Savile was still at Radio 1 while I was there. And uh, you didn't see him much, but you did see him. And there were always um, rumours and stories about him. I have to say, not with, not with children so much, mm. it's just odd practices. So mm. when I hear people who were in charge of Radio 1 at that time saying, we knew nothing about this, I find that difficult to believe because I was the, low, I was the most junior producer there and I'd heard things. So the idea that you hadn't heard anything... Um, seems unlikely to me some people were much nicer to me than others you know peter powell was always very nice i was always i always felt overjoyed to know peel a little bit around the corner of the door came annie nightingale and she said you all right and i said i think so and she said do you need a drink or do you want to go for a pint or you know and i've never forgotten that that annie um but it was just this sort of, and she was famous and well, she what was she cool. picked up on there? Well, you know, she was just nice and yeah. she thought that here's this kid from the north who's come down and he yeah. doesn't know anybody. I'll just make sure he's all right. Oh, you know? yeah. And so it didn't occur to me that this folk thing was something different. Yeah. And I still don't think that. I still think there's only music, really. And so, like, people, I, it always surprises me when people say to me, oh, I've heard your electronic album, but I thought you did a folk show. I said, well, why would those things be mutually exclusive? Shane McGowan? I interviewed Shane McGowan. I've did interviewed him many did times. It, it well, it took a while. <laughs> I think it was a heavy edit for someone. <laughs> so for a long time, my career was producing music uh, performed by musicians who didn't want to play it, for programmes who didn't want to program it, to an audience who didn't want well, to hear it. And you wanted a couple of fossils to interview, so Phil and I, <laughs> <laughs> Phil and I came along. And, That's right. Uh, what was the name of that pub it in was beer? The Dolphin. The Dolphin, yes. And the famous line. The famous line, drinking beer with Phil Beer in beer. How cool is that? <laughs> yeah, so I tried to copy so many times since then. <laughs> and we weren't sure what to play. Uh, you we, played a brilliant version of Boy of That's summer right. that night yeah. it was fabulous literally really dozens great. of emails flooded in it was literally yeah well you know no it was a great version, i think you had that. seth on one night fisherman's friends another was fisherman's friends were on the last night in exmouth where we also blew quite a lot of um, yeah. the radio 2 budget uh, and therefore your license fee on a firework display fireworks on the radio <laughs> what's not to like so it's fireworks on the radio it was literally about 20 grand's worth of fireworks going up and me and Stuart going ooh ah that was 20 grand's worth of your money so I apologise now um, yeah and then we had a sort of midlife crisis where we decided to dress as pirates, pirates. really <laughs> and I think in my own mind you wanted to identify as well I think so <laughs> I think you know I thought, well, I saw um, Johnny Depp as Captain Jack Sparrow, you know, and I think mine came out as more as Captain Jack Duckworth. But it was like, I, 
We are the same thing. It's like we've all worn shorts this week, but not on stage. Yeah. No, like if you're on stage, look slightly better dressed than the audience, which, <laughs> <coughs> which frankly is not difficult here. But the um, but the, but 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 I mean, it is look look like you've come to do a show, not fix the heating. Yeah. And and, uh, yeah. and I, we played at Shrewsbury when yeah, you, Shrews, you, Shrews, you, Shrews. you were the patron and you chose as as your patron's pick. Yeah, I regret that moment. I'm sure you do. <laughs> We know you're ill at some point. Yeah. How, how are you now and how's that, how's that progressing? And, and has no. that changed the way you look at what's rest of our days here? Or? Yes. I have nothing profound to tell you because I think everybody who's been through it feels the same thing. Yeah. In 19... What was it? Uh, 2018, um, I was on holiday in Cornwall and I had a beard and I decided to shave it off and I found a lump in my neck. And I said to Bella... What's that, do you think? She said, it looks like a swollen lymph node. And it was, but it was the secondary cancer from um, on the deep back of my tongue. And they removed a um, something the size of an apple out of my neck and something the size of a walnut off the back of my tongue. Bella said, Christ, that's practically a Waldorf salad. <laughs> I thought, I love this girl. And but it's just like, it suddenly doesn't matter if the washing machine has broken, do you know what I mean? Um, and... All this and being here with you today in the sunshine in Ibiza, you think, like they told me that if they hadn't caught that lump, I had six to eight months. That was five years ago. Mm. So, the, so it, is, it does all feel extra mm. and it does all feel a bonus and it does all feel it's here to be enjoyed. Mm. You know, even if the audience don't. And, and this is your first time to Costa. And are it you, is. Are you going to come again? Without doubt. I mean, for a while I didn't come because um, uh, Mike Harding, for whom I have the utmost admiration, as I said before about talking about comedy and storytelling, and he was a big influence on me. And he, I took over from him on the Radio 2 folk show, and he wasn't happy about that. He wasn't unhappy with me, and he and I talked, but he didn't want to lose that show, and I don't want to lose this show. So I understood that. But then he was very involved in Costa del Folk, and I, and I was invited, but I thought that that would be indelicate of me to encroach on that other territory of his. And so it's taken a while. It's taken a while. But it... it to me now, it feels like the start of something, mm. you know, and uh, and I I do hope to uh, get more free holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think we're here? <laughs> <laughs> and okay. finally, mm. I said about the TV presenter, DJ, musician, author, which hat would you choose to wear to be defined by? Being a radio presenter is kind of not what I do, it's what I am. It's kind of in my bones, you know, it's kind of like... And, and uh, when I do a live radio show and people say, do you feel nerves? I think, I, I, I say, no, I feel more relaxed because mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm home. Mm -hmm. But all of it, all of it is um, secondary to having been in a massive band. Mm. So the thing that gives me the greatest pleasure is doing a good gig. Um, yeah. And like this afternoon when people were listening to us and listening to the songs and it seemed to be going OK. And like even though I made uh, started one song wrong and then again, he's like, you know, I think if you're amongst friends and you feel that kind of warmth and everything, I think. So, you know, if I, if, if I'm remembered for anything, it'll be, be radio shows. But for me, the greatest achievement is a great gig. And I still wake up in the morning and think, Brilliant gig today. Even if, even if I've done a radio show to two million people, and I'm doing a gig to fifty. Yeah, it's still the gig where you can see the whites of their eyes and feel their uh, appreciation or blind hatred. I think yeah. on that note, I think we should give Mark Radcliffe a round of applause from here. So, Costa. Thank you very Delphoque. much. Thank you. Lovely. Thank you, Mark. Mark Radcliffe. Mark Radcliffe, everybody. Steve Knightley. <laughs>